So thank you so much for inviting me to give this uh, this lecture series. I'm very excited. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to Barcelona, so I'm uh, you know um, giving this talk from from Stockholm. Um, and um, there has been some dramatic developments in rational homotopy theory in, in recent years, and many of those developments have to do with importing ideas from operatic calculus to higher structures and, um, and developing them. So the, the goal of my lectures is to, to uh, give you a glimpse of some of those developments and to um, formulate rational homotopy theory in these, uh, let's say, uh, higher structure terms. So um, the goal of my first lecture will be to discuss the following theorem. So for each uh, simply connected uh, space X of finite Q type, a finite Q type means uh, you have a uh, rational homology uh, that is finite dimension in each. The Russian one of the space is finite dimension. Um, for each such space, there exists higher structure on the rational cohomology, namely um, uh, a C infinity of the structure. And an L infinity of the structure on the shifted rational homotopy groups. And these two structures are, are uh, each one of them is a complete invariant of the rational homotopy type of the space. Um, so these structures have the property that two simply connected spaces, X and Y, are rationally equivalent. I'll remind you what this means in a second. The Russian equivalent, if and only if uh, the cohomology ring with this C infinity under the structure uh, is isomorphic in the C infinity sense and or equivalently uh, the Russian homotopy groups. Or sorry, um, isomorphic in the L infinity sense. So was that last part visible? It seems so. Um, by the way, I don't have the chat up here, so if someone else can please keep track of the chat and ask if there are questions. Okay. So uh, let's remind ourselves uh, what these things mean. So uh, first, let's just remind us of what rational equivalence means. So, uh, so a map F of topological spaces is uh, rational equivalence. If it induces an isomorphism on rational homology groups. If X happens to be simply connected, this is equivalent to inducing an isomorphism on rational homotopy groups. Uh, but if F, X is not simply connected, well, once the, I mean, once the rationalization of the fundamental group, well, uh, sorry? Still time. Huh? 
Is there a question? No. Uh, so if this is an isomorphism, sorry. And, and this this definition makes sense for general spaces. Uh, no connectivity assumptions necessary. Um, and then and then uh, this means the spaces are rationally equivalent if there exists a zigzag. Of rational equivalences that connect them. Okay. So um, I want to pick up where Ricardo left off. I mean, he's talked twice introducing an infinite algebra. So Let's let's review in a little bit more detail what these uh, structures are uh, from a classical point of view, and then I will connect it to the operatic point of view that Ricardo mentioned. So um, let's begin with C infinite algebras, uh, and then before I can define C infinite algebras, let me let me we need to talk about A infinite algebras. So A infinite algebras. So. Um, an A infinite algebra structure on a cochain complex A is a family of operations um, Like so, and this is for M uh, two and so on, or two and above, uh, and this is of degree uh, in the cohomological degree convention. It's of degree two minus M. Uh, and it's such that Um, they resolve the associativity relation. So let me explain. So uh, in the chain complex of maps, uh, so I have that M2 is a chain map. So, so it's a cycle in the chain complex of, of maps from A tensor square to A. Uh, but then I don't require M2 to be associative, but I require it to be associative of the homotopy. And M3 is a is a specific uh, homotopy that that um, for the associative. So the differential of M3 is going to be the associative of this binary operation. Okay. And then uh, this is the start of a resolution, as it were, of the uh, associative operat. And the mu ends, m ends, they are the, uh, what, you know, they, they, they take care of the higher sysigies, uh, you know, in the, in the resolution. And uh, there's an explicit formula, and it goes like follows. Um, I'll not write out the signs here. Uh, Um, you 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 compose so here u is equal to uh, so you you compose the operations in all possible ways and uh, that's the differential of mm. Um, this is the definition we find in, for instance, Bernard Keller's introduction to the subject, which is an excellent reference if you want to um, during the I mean if you want to brush up on this during the talk you can. Have a look in Keller's notes. I will be following his conventions. Uh, 
Then there's this equivalent definition, which is uh, the definition in terms of the Bohr complex. Um, so equivalently, uh, an infinity structure on A can be viewed as a strong derivation perturbation on tensor column. So here uh, S is my notation for the shift. Um, so I shift uh, down from logic to yes. Um, and what, what, what do I mean by code? Duration perturbation. Well, the tensor coalgebra is a coalgebra, and so B is a coderation with respect to the usual deconcatenation co product. A perturbation uh, for me is well, A has implicitly a differential to begin with. I don't include that into the structure of the infinity. I mean, it, it sort of A comes from the differential, and then so the tensor coalgebra comes from the differential, but then I can perturb that differential. Uh, so, what I mean when I say that perturbation is that internal differential of the tensor coalgebra plus b squared to zero and gives me a new differential. That's what I mean by perturbation. Okay. Uh, and the relation between these two is given by the following equation. Uh, sorry. It's given by the following equation. So uh, if I write use the usual bar notation for elements of this tensor coalgebra, uh, I mean, you know, this is the this is the like, sum n. So this is an element in, in this n guy, and I use the traditional notation for instead of tensors, I write bars, and the differential acting on such a thing is equal to well, you have a linear term, meaning the term where L is equal to one, uh, and that's given by plus or minus this uh, MN applied to the sequence of elements A1 up to AN. And then uh, there are higher terms. But you can check that for a code derivation, um, so what is SA? SA is the is the shift. Um, so uh, right. So so uh, you can check that a, a code derivation on the tensor coalgebra is um, uh, uniquely determined by its linear part. So, um, 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 so once you know that you, you have an actual coordination, to know which one, I only need to tell you what the linear part is. Uh, and, that, and that gives you the relation between these two. Okay. And then some notation uh, the bar construction, obviously, in any algebra will be the co coalgebra with this uh, perturbed differential. That's the bar construction on a unit algebra. So this is a DG co-algebra. Okay. So, okay, so that's the name in this address. It's very classical. It comes back to, 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 to Stasher, I believe. Um, so, what's a C infinite algebra? It's a commutative A infinity algebra, you could say. Um, so, uh, what's a C infinite algebra? Well, it's, it's as above, it's an A infinite algebra. Uh, but plus some conditions. 
Nee, nee. Uh, uh, the multiplication should be graded commutative. So I can write that as an equation as follows. Uh, uh, so this is an element uh, of the group algebra of a symmetric group of two letters. This is the transposition and this is the identity. And this equation uh, expresses the fact that M2 uh, is grade commutative. And then for the for the higher MNs, there's a similar equation that must be satisfied. Um, and it's the following. Um, so MN composed with a specific element in the group algebra of sigma N, uh, this should be zero, where uh, now uh, this is the sum over all shuffles. Um, um, uh, where you this is it's a sign, it's an alternating sum, you take the sign of the uh, permutation uh, times that permutation, uh, and yeah, this is an element. So, uh, and the shuffles, I mean, so this being in the shuffle means that. Uh, it's a permutation. I think <laughs> uh, Okay, so uh, you say this, you say that, that uh, M and should punish more shuffles. So uh, a C infinity algebra is an A infinity algebra where there's a multiplication of Spanish and shuffles. Um, and then what happens in this alternative definition um, is that uh, this differential, this perturbation B is derivation with respect to uh, the shuffle product on on the tensor co algebra which means that it descends to the indecomposables of this now pg hot algebra um, so we get uh, so these are the indecomposables with respect to the shuffle product, and that turns out to be identifiable with the co free Lee co algebra. Uh, well, you can use this as a definition of the co free Lee co algebra. Want. Uh, there's also an operatic description of this. Um, right, so we get uh, the model space now. So, so we get uh, and so the, the, this four construction, I uh, mean, of a so four. A plus the infinity algebra. Uh, we have a Lee version of the Bohr construction. So this is my notation for that. Uh, and lower star of A is going to be this uh, co algebra on the suspension of A with this perturbed differential, which is now uh, uh, a co derivation uh, differential on the Lee co algebra. Okay. And uh, for use later, the dual of this will play a role. So when I write upper star, I just mean the, the, the linear dual. And I write linear duals as with this symbol. Okay, uh, great. Alex, what does 
start. Uh, so we have a question from the local audience. There's a small uh, local audience here in Stockholm, and they ask, "What is the star here?" Uh, so the star here uh, is the shuffle product. So, yeah. Uh, I will not review it. You can probably Google it for those of you who have a computer in front of you. Okay, now let me discuss uh, an infinity algebra from a uh, similar point of view. So, um, so when an infinity structure a chain complex, Now I switch to homological grading because in the end I want to apply this to homotopy groups where, where I have a homological uh, degree or well, homotopical degree, I suppose. Uh, that's a family of maps Ln, L tensor M, and again. Uh, I don't view the differential as part of the structure that sort of comes before. You know. uh, and this is now of degree, homological degree n minus two, uh, and such that um, this is similar in spirit to infinite algebra, but here instead of resolving the subjectivity, I want to resolve the Jacobian Jacob identity. Um, so, uh, and first of all, Ln is anti symmetric in the graded sense. Uh, if I apply a permutation to the inputs, uh, it should be the same as, as um, uh, I mean, um, uh, you get the same thing, but up to the sign, where the sign is given by the Cassoul sign convention. If you swap elements of what degree, you get a sign, and, and then you multiply with the sign of the permutation. It's anti symmetric. Uh, uh, and they should resolve. So maybe I'll put it here. Um, uh, so L2 is a, is a, is a moment's chain map, and it wants to be a lead uh, algebra structure, but the Jacobi identity will not be fulfilled. However, it's the field of the homotopy. And let me write this in elements. So the differential of this operator of the uh, three, when applied to three elements in my uh, L infinity algebra, is equal to the Jacobian, as it were, of the of the of the uh, yeah, so we, we write uh, at the short hand, I, I write this in brackets. Uh, we have two, uh, and uh, you get this uh, something like this. Um, And if you insert the correct signs here, uh, you will get uh, the Jacobi identity, or rather, I mean, setting this to, to be zero would be the usual Jacobi identity, even I created the algebra. But now it holds up to homotopy. And then uh, this formula can be generalized to describe the differentials of the higher modifications. And, and uh, it goes as follows. Um, Uh, so the differential of Lm is called, when applied to elements alpha one alpha m is going to be sum over p of a certain sign uh, alpha sigma one alpha sigma p and then the rest uh, alpha sigma p one 
And uh, this is uh, uh, similar to here. I mean, what you do is you look at the sum over all. So P goes from, from, from two to, to n minus one, and you sum over all unshuffles. Uh, so these are uh, permutations that, well, these come in the correct order and these come in the correct order. So, okay. Um, and as, I mean, this is this is clearly a generalization of, of this, right? <laughs> Uh, and that turns out that that gives you the whole resolution of the view of that. It's very beautiful. Um, and again, here we, we can define uh, we can make this implicit definition of a definite algebra in terms of co derivation perturbations on a certain co free co algebra. So equivalently, uh, an infinity structure on M is um, a co derivation derivation P on. The symmetric co algebra. Uh, by which I mean, uh, so I use I use rational homotopy theory as notation for the, the three graded commutative algebra or the three graded co commutative co algebra. So I use lambda to denote that. And that's typically, I mean, that's a habit from rational homotopy theory. Um, you should not confuse it with the exterior algebra. Um, so, uh, so, but this, so this is a symmetric co algebra, and it's, it's uh, by definition uh, um, the sigma and uh, co invariants uh, when you take tensor powers. Or since we're in characteristic zero, uh, everything in my talks will be over the rational numbers. All vector spaces will be over the rational numbers. And uh, well, certainly characteristic zero it doesn't matter if you take covariance or invariance. The good way would be to take invariance, but that's not going to, I mean, those subtleties will not play a role here uh, since we're in characteristic zero. Um, symmetric co algebra, yeah. So, uh, what's the co algebra structure? Uh, there's a unique co algebra structure on this thing. This is, as an algebra, this is a three graded commutative algebra. And then there's a unique uh, co algebra structure such that all the elements of SL are primitive. So that's one way of describing the, the co algebra structure. Um, but let me, I didn't finish the sentence yet. So an, an infinity structure uh, is a co derivation perturbation on the symmetric co algebra. And, and the relation is uh, so a relation to. The elements is the following similar if I have an element like this, uh, this is equal to plus or minus uh, Ln of x1 xn. So the linear term is given by Ln, and then you have higher terms. But just as for the tensor co algebra, any co derivation on a symmetric co algebra is determined by what the linear terms are. So this actually gives you, gives you a correspondence. And some notation that I will use in my talks uh, will be uh, C star of L. So this is like chains on L. This is like the, the, the uh, generalization to L infinite algebras. Of the Chevalier Eilenberg chains on a on a Lie algebra, so it's the same, the same. I mean, this was specialized to that literally. Um, 
So, so let's let go of this picture that I have in front. Uh, and it's a DG, DG uh, a co commutative DG co op. Uh, there's a question. So the higher terms are determined by Allen operation but with some other formula. That's that's true, but I would say it's actually a beautiful formula. <laughs> but but I will not write it down. But uh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, and then the dual again. So I would want to talk about the dual of this. So again, I just take the, the linear dual, and this is a commutative differential graded algebra. I mean, I, I can always do it as a co-algebra. And get an algebra. In the previous talks, there were some discussions about the problem of dualizing a co-algebra to get an algebra. That's not always possible. But if I have a co-algebra, I can dualize it and get a, an algebra. That's no problem. Uh, without any finiteness uh, hypothesis. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, so that's uh, my review of, of these uh, these three structures that play an important role. Um, I'll now shift to the operatic perspective, but before that, maybe if there are some questions before we move on, please ask a question because I'm not sure whether the mic, uh, whether my my uh, speakers here are functioning properly. I think it is great because people have no question and they are following you. So. I think you can see. <laughs> so if you see someone's name, you let me know. Okay, so now I want to explain uh, this from the operatic perspective and connected to Ricardo's lecture. So we have a question in the chat. You have a question. Yeah. What about the anti commutability? Yeah, what about it? So Ellen is anti commutative. And so, what, you know, what's the question? You mean how it's reflected on this this uh, Chevalier algebra complex? So it's it's reflected in the fact that we it actually induces a map uh, on this these invariants or co-invariants. That's the anti-symmetry. And and the reason you get down to symmetry, I mean, you might be surprised that you get something a free gradient into the thing. But that's because we have suspended. So when we suspend here, anti symmetry gets, I mean, becomes uh, symmetry. So the suspension is what, you know, I don't know if that answers the question. So now the operatic perspective. So there's a way of talking about these three structures in, in you know in, in one. I mean at the same time, and that can be very useful. So so we're in the situation now. So we use the same notation as Ricardo. So P is some operat. Uh, and in, our, in, the, in the cases where we're interested in, it's the, maybe the associate operat, maybe the commutative operat, or, or the Lee operat, those would be the main operas. And we're in a situation where we actually managed to construct explicitly a minimal resolution of this operat, or any resolution. So the infinity for me would be uh, some co uh, resolution. In, I mean, and co fibers in Hinix, the uh, only category of DG operas that was uh, uh, mentioned. And I assume it will have this nice form. Um, uh, the operatic co bar construction on a certain co operat, or well, DG co operat. Uh, or, You should note that not every co 
models will be of this form. Uh, I mean, in general, I guess, I mean, a, a co fibrant, I mean, the opera will be some three operators in differential. And well, secretly, I guess it's the co construction on some infinity co or something like that. But we will not need to worry about such things. But for us, it suffices to look at co operates. I mean, ordinary co operates. And I mean, if uh, uh, he is one of these Kazoo operates, these are all examples of Kazoo operates. Um, then we can take. Then we can take C uh, to be this. So this is an upside down exclamation point, and it's pronounced anti shriek for reasons that are, yeah, it's that's traditional, I suppose. Uh, so this is a Kuzul dual co op rat of the Kuzul op rat P. And in the cases that we're interested in, um, so for the associated opera, we can take the operatic suspension of it and then take the linear dual. And then similarly for the others. So, but the commutative opera is Kusulu into the linear opera. So here I should put the linear opera. And then, and, and then the dual of the linear opera is has to be the commutative opera. Uh, and that gives us actually the minimal resolution. Um, uh, so, but in general, I mean, you can take as the Ricardo explained. So, in general, we can take the, the, the instead of the minimal resolution. I mean, you can look for minimal resolution, but it might be difficult to describe explicitly. But then you can always take the canonical resolution, which is uh, the bar cover. So, so you can take C to be in the bar construction. Um. Now, and you can describe P infinity algebra anytime you have. So now we return to this situation. P infinity just is of the form of cobar of C, not necessarily a Kusun uh, C. So uh, uh, P infinity under the structure on a, a co chain complex or chain complex A uh, is, or well, uh, maybe identified with uh, a co derivation. D on on the co-free co-op rad and this actually subsumes the examples we discussed in the beginning um, you might be confused that there, I mean in, in my definition I took the, I always shifted my algebra, so I took the tensor co algebra on a shift of A. That shift is hidden in the description of the Kusul dual uh, uh, co operat. It's this operatic shift. So that is responsible for, you know, when I take C equals to the dual of the shift of an associative operat, and then uh, evaluating this, I get exactly uh, the D suspension of the, the thing that I wrote down earlier. So, so it's essentially equivalent. Uh, and now uh, I can give the important definition of an infinity morphism, which now works in this, this general context. So um, an infinity morphism of the infinity of us. Um, is, oh, excuse me, uh, sorry, I forgot to say one thing. Uh, there's an important feature here. Uh, code duration perturbation D on this thing that decreases. Wait. This is the weight. 
the end here is the weight. I have a, I have a, I have a weight grading on this cope thing, and I, I require that the differential decreases weight. So if you think about the Bohr construction of an ordinary algebra, when you apply the differential, you're going to smash elements together, you're going to multiply them, and that decreases the Bohr length. And it's the same idea in general. And, and here it's important to separate the internal differential. I mean, A is a chain complex. So C of A has some internal differential, that's sort of a linear differential. And so, so the infinity structure is, is all in this weight decreasing co-derivation, co-derivation of that internal differential that I may have. Um, right, and then, and then the notation, uh, I just use B as a generic notation for uh, the Bohr construction. So it has to, someone asked if that stretch is zero. So perturbation by definition means that the internal differential of CA plus B squares to zero. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so the bar construction of this A is by definition equal to this. So this is a DG C co and, and all my co algebras will be code important in, in my talks, by the way. So now uh, an infinity morphism uh, of infinity algebra. I'll, I'll denote it by a curly arrow following the notation in Lode Ballet. Um, so it's, it's by definition. Just a morphism of DG C coalitions from the bar construction of A uh, uh, to the bar construction of A prime. This is a very old idea. This goes back to, I mean, people have talked about infinity morphisms before the infinite algebras were invented. So there's this, this the old works of Guggenheim and Munkholm that talk about the category dash, which is the differential graded algebras, but with strongly homotopy multiplicative morphisms. And they use exactly this definition in the strongly homotopy uh, multiplicative morphism, it's exactly a morphism of the algebras on the bar constructions. Um, uh, and they use this to extend the functionality of the, I mean, algebra more spectral things with dignity. So these, these ideas have been around for quite some time. <clears throat> so now uh, I come to a very important theorem in this business. It's like one of the main results in the uh, in this theory of, of uh, Infinity algebras. It's the it's the homotopy transfer theory, and I think everyone who works in the field has their own favorite proof of the homotopy transfer theorem. There are tons of different approaches to it, but that's I guess good. I mean, it's an important theorem. Um, so, let's first state it. So now, I mean, I mean, again, in this operatic setting, so I'm similar to, I mean, if you like, I mean, you can, you can just think of ordinary infinite algebras if you like, uh, but, but it, 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 this applies to all examples that I talked about so far. So the setup is the following. You have, you, you have as input, you start with a contraction, Contraction of chain complexes. Well, so far, I mean, these, these are ungraded things, so you could pull around and think of them. I mean, sorry, not ungraded, they're unbounded, so you could think of them as co chain complexes if you like. It doesn't matter. Um, and what uh, a contraction is, is, is simply a strong deformation retract of chain complexes. So, 
So you have that F composed with G is the identity on B. And well, G composed with F is not quite the identity necessarily, but it, it's, it's a homotopic to the identity. And, and the homotopy is given by H. So A, this is a chain homotopy equivalence with, with special properties. And then as is, you know, one can always assume these so-called side conditions that F composed with H is zero, H composed with G is zero, and H composed with itself is zero. Uh, there's, a, there's an easy way of, I mean, if you don't have these conditions, you can always modify F, G, and H a little bit to make sure they are satisfied. Uh, uh, so it's harmless to assume this. So that's the setup, and uh, and and also it's part of the input is also, uh, and I have also a, so I have a contraction. That's the first piece of input. The second piece of input is a uh, is is a P infinity. Uh, and now I'm using this. Uh, I mean, I'm using the differential B to record the infinite structure. Um, um, and then the output is is uh, 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 I can transfer the structure from A to B along the construction, where I get a, a new P infinity structure. On uh, uh, B, B prime on B, and uh, and an extension of uh, F and G to infinity morphisms, and in fact, well, infinity cosine isomorphisms. Um, uh, between A and B. So, in effect, what I'm doing is I can always put an infinity structure on the smaller chain complex, B in this case, but retaining the homotopy type, meaning retaining the, the homotopy equivalent, or well, like this quasi isomorphic infinity uh, structure on B. So, this is one of the main benefits of working in the infinite with infinite algebras. This is patently untrue if you work with, say, you know, ordinary associative algebras. You, you, should, you cannot expect to deform an associative algebra structure to a smaller chain complex and retain associativity as such. So this is what I mean. But, but the infinity algebras are, are, are accommodating enough to, to uh, uh, support that kind of kind of. Um, so that's the main um, takeaway. And uh, I actually wanted to give you the proof. So my, I want to give you my favorite proof of this theorem. And, and I like it because it, it's the proof that, uh, I mean, many, many of you are probably familiar with these conservative Soiberman tree formulas for transferring infinity structures. And those generalize to P infinity algebras. And this is explained very well in the book of Lode and Manet. I wanted to explain the homological perturbation theory approach to this theorem, where you always work on the level of the, the implicit definition. You all work with this differential rather than with, with the MNs or the LNs and so on. That can be quite um, uh, useful at times. And the formulas are much simpler, at least I think so, but it's, simplicity is a subjective notion, I think, on the other hand. So, So uh, how do we prove this? Uh, so one is then the original contraction to a contraction when I apply the coping co alpha Uh, this is always possible. F and G are just the obvious extensions of, of small f and small g. Uh, the capital H is a little trickier, but there's an explicit formula for, for the homotopy. 
Um, in characteristic zero, it's really important. Excuse me, if you work with symmetric over operands, it's really important that you're in characteristic zero. Otherwise, this is not possible. But if you work with non-symmetric operands, you know, characteristic zero is actually not necessary. Um, so you can extend this to a contraction. And I mean, I can, if anyone likes, I can give you the formulas, but I will not write them down right now. And then the second step is to apply this, this uh, uh, I mean, this, this basic perturbation that I think it's called. So, This is an old technique for transferring differentials or perturbations of differentials in open fractions. It goes back to Guggenheim and, and Brown. Uh, I mean, um, so the basic perturbation lemma produces a new contraction. Uh, where I now have inserted this perturbation B, which records the infinity structure. And here, what I get, the new thing is I get a new uh, uh, differential here. That's the, the novelty. And then I have F prime and G prime here. So those are perturbations of the original maps. And I also have a perturbation of the, of the homotopy. And uh, this is, I mean, this is completely explicit. Uh, so B prime is equal to F sigma B. Uh, F prime is equal to F. Where I have a certain operator sigma uh, of degree zero acting on on the bigger thing, uh, sigma is so where sigma is equal to uh, this infinite sum. B. I mean, we're now working here, so I want to produce an operator here. I start with B. Uh, but then I, 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 I perturb it. So B plus HB plus B HB squared, oops, and so on. And I, I continue this to an infinite series. Um, now, the point is that this actually converges. That's why I was too concerned about saying earlier that B needs to be weights increasing. So since B increases weight, you can check that this actually converges point-wise, so, so this is a, a you know, well-defined operator. And uh, yeah, and then here are the formulas for the new contraction. Uh, and what's, it's non-obvious, but it's true. Is that, uh, well, the classical perturbation lemma states that, oh, you actually do get the contraction. It's a perturbation of the, of the differential, and you get some new contraction. But now we're interested in these algebra structures. I really need that B prime is a co-derivation. Otherwise, I can't interpret it as, a, as an infinity structure. But that's actually true. So the classical formulas of Guggenheim and Brown, they actually produce for you co-derivations when you insert co-derivations. So that's, that's uh, non-obvious, but true. So B prime is actually a co-derivation. And an F prime, and, and, and uh, these are more I see. And uh, a little history. So this proof of the homotopy transfer theorem has been, I mean, was developed, I mean, quite early by Guggenheim, Lamb, and Stashev for A-infinite algebras. But they pointed out that there was a problem 
uh, they couldn't figure out how to do it for for symmetric uh, things. I mean, for like Lie algebra, so commutative algebra. So so, uh, uh, um, but but you can you can you can take care of that. And I have a I have a paper which which deals with that particular problem. Um, <laughs> Um, so I mentioned, yeah, and also two, two other people that should be mentioned here are Johannes Hubschmann and uh, who also have similar uh, results. I think Hubschmann actually had a proof of the perturbation in gamma for, for like an infinite um, uh, using this kind of approach before I wrote my paper. So and the, and the point here is that um, yes. this gives us yeah, the infinity structure. B and infinity for taxes. So we have we have a and these are our weak equivalences. Okay, good. So uh, let's see it's twelve thirty now. How long should I go on? I will say at least 30 more minutes. Yeah, okay, good. So I have a question actually, Alexander. Do, yeah. you, have any, do you have any news regarding uh, capital H prime? So capital H prime should be an infinity or not appear. We've seen the results recently in this direction. Sorry, you didn't catch that last thing, is that? Okay, oh, what about H prime? Yeah. F prime is an infinity morphism, G prime is an infinity morphism. So, yeah. everybody so that, I think, I mean, when I, my paper is a little lower, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's from the a couple of years old, but I have this notion of pseudo derivations of, of C co algebras. Um, but I don't think that's the optimal. I think there are probably better things you can say. Uh, so, so, but let, it's an interesting question, but maybe, uh, maybe we can talk about that. Okay, so I, I don't want to get, get get into that too much right now, uh, if you don't mind. Very sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so now let's look at, yeah, so a consequence of this. Um, so yeah, that's the, the end of the, 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 the proof. Um, the important consequence is this, this sort of, Minimal modal theorem, you could call it. So uh, every every p infinity algebra uh, uh, can be multiplied by its own order. So we're working over a field. So uh, every uh, P algebra, I mean, yeah, actually P infinity algebra, uh, A, uh, there is a, uh, uh, um, there's a P infinity algebra structure. On the cohomology, and Infinity for sizes uh, between A and its homology. So this means that the, the homotopy type of, of the P infinity algebra A can be recorded by the cohomology, but with this you know, the infinity structure. So you don't lose any information on the passing the cohomology, you just have to retain this higher, this higher structure on the cohomology. So that's the first point. And the second point is that uh, it actually is a, is a complete invariant of the P infinity homotopy type. So A uh, is equivalent as 
thì cái này là bus ethanol They are infinitely isomorphic, the, the commonly used. So, um, so what do you mean by going to H1? Um, yeah, so, so the way I stated it here, it's, it's uh, more obvious than if I if you I mean, take this thing. So, I want to look at P. In the end, I want to move to rational theory. And there I work with DGD on the bus or DG community about the bus. So, so I want to apply this theorem there. So let me state it in a less general way so that it's uh, applicable to. to uh, but, but then this, this point becomes a little more subtle. So let me explain that. So if I write ordinary P algebra, there's a P infinity structure on the cohomology that retains the, the homotopy type. And two ordinary P algebra are quasi isomorphic, connected by zigzag or quasi isomorphism. So ordinary P algebra. If and only if the cohomologies are uh, isomorphic in the infinity sense, meaning that there are infinity morphisms back and forth, so that that would be isomorphic. Um, and the, the proof is is. Uh, there's one further thing that I wanted to add that is everything is over a field of characteristic zero. Um, so proof one, so use the homotopy concept here. Uh, we can always find exactly the cluster of a field. And we can always find a contraction. Uh, between A and its cohomology, every chain complex of the fields. Okay. Actually, here, uh, I mean, we could work in any sense, it's simple, that we can have for I mean, work with representations of some reductive group or something like that, yeah, some semi simple category, I mean, it's the same, right? It's probably very characteristic. Yeah, zero. So, so anyway, so, but uh, certainly over a field, we can manage this and then use the homotopy concept here. So that takes care of one. And for the second point, so I need to show that two P algebras are quasi isomorphic if and only if the commodities are P infinity isomorphic. So one direction is clear. So, so, uh, so you know, this direction, suppose A is weakly equivalent to A prime as P algebras. So it's enough to consider the case where I have a, a direct morphism. Uh, but then, then, I mean, from the homotopy transfer theorem, I have this infinity force isomorphism, and I can compose them. And, and this shows. Uh, so, so that's, that's, that's here. Um, the second point uses uh, something called, which and, and, and another important principle in this uh, theory of infinity algebra, namely rectification. So that's why I wanted to restrict to P algebra, because otherwise I wouldn't need to talk about rectification. So, uh, so, so now suppose that you have uh, uh, so given. An infinity isomorphism. Uh, we get, uh, we get again by composing with these. I mean, we have maps back and forth from A to its coordinate and so on. So we can compose with those to get an infinity quasi isomorphism from A to A prime. But we want an actual, I mean, we want an actual quasi isomorphism of strict P algebra. And that's where rectification comes in. So, uh, so, uh, 
And, and uh, one way to say this is that every infinity morphism uh, is, uh, is secretly a zigzag. Of strict theatromorphism, namely, well, you have a canonical resolution uh, of A, and uh, like this, and then you can take the adjoints of the infinity morphism. So this is um, this is this group of. Um, so this is I don't do well remember what an infinity morphism is by definition it's a map between the bar constructions now I have a bar and cobar junction. Uh, between, I guess, C, O algebra, and yes. Um, and 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 uh, yeah. So to remember, I mean, remember, I'm working with uh, the infinity is of the form omega c equals some co-op, right? And this is a resolution of p. And this gives me a twisting morphism from c to p, which lets me set up on a junction like so. Um, and that's the and that's the um, uh, the proof. I mean, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, if, if now uh, I start with an infinity. Quasi-isomorphism, then this adjoint will also be, be uh, an, an, uh, an equivalence. So this will be a zigzag of equivalences of strict p algorithms. Okay. Uh, good. So, so now. Uh, that sort of ends my review of the infinity algebra theory, I suppose. Uh, so the two important principles to play, the homotopy transfer theorem and the rectification. And those two principles allow us to prove that for a P algebra, uh, uh, the differential graded P algebra, uh, um, the two differential graded P algebra are quasi-isomorphic if and only if their cohomologies are infinity isomorphic. And now, now the next thing we want to do now is to apply this to rational homotopy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so actually, I think, yeah. Uh, this deserves a new board. So my great preference for all these things, by the way, is, is obviously the book uh, Algebraic Operas by Lola and Valet. So well, now a rational homotopy theory. So let me give you a crash course on Sullivan's uh, theory. Um, So it all starts with the Deron theorem. The cohomology of a manifold can be computed as the cohomology of the Deron complex. 
And then Sullivan introduced this polynomial uh, the Rom complex that, that can be defined without any smooth structures it's defined for simplician complexes. And then you can just define for simplician sets and so and hence for any homotopy type. Um, so you, in the modern formulations of the theory, you start with a simplician commutative differential graded algebra. Uh, in, in simplicial level M, it's the polynomial differential forms with Q coefficients on the standard N simplex. And the formulas, if you use the barycentric coordinates uh, in zero to Pn, it would have this form. And the, the, the dt has to have degree zero, these are degree one, and you have a differential graded algebra. Uh, so uh, now any simplicial object in any category gives rise to an adjunction between simplicial sets and that category. Uh, and that we will utilize here. So this gives rise to uh, an adjunction between simplicial sets and the opposite category of commutative differential graded algebras over Q, where here I have the Sullivan's uh, version of the Durham complex, which is defined for any simplicial set. And then here I have the simplicial realization functor. And they're given by, you know, what do you do if you have a simplicial set X? Well, you just write X as a co-limit over its synthesis. And you think of X as the union over its synthesis. And over each simplex, you put a differential form, and then you say that they should be compatible. So formally, that amounts to forming the inverse limit over the category of synthesis in X uh, over uh, omega M. <clears throat> and, and the realization functor uh, is given by just taking a differential graded algebra and then taking morphisms from A to this simplicial object. And that gives me a simplicial set. Okay. So this is the junction. And I mean, the, the, you know, this is very general that anytime you have a simplicial object, you get an, a junction of this, this form. So this is very much a form of nonsense. Um, now, so let, let me highlight the properties of this adjunction that is not formal nonsense. The, the, the properties that actually have some content. Okay, so um, the first thing is this the polynomial the wrong theorem. It's just that this omega here it actually does compute cohomology. So uh, there is always one size morphism from this to the singular co chain algebra of, of, of the simplicial set X, a quasi morphism. Okay, so, so the cohomology of omega of X is the normal isomorphism to the singular cohomology with rational coefficients. The second thing is the existence and uniqueness of, of minimal models. So if X is an important, actually, let me, let me take the simple connection. And a finite Q type. As in the beginning of this talk, uh, then there exists a unique ISO uh, um, minimal Sullivan model. I'll explain what this means. Uh, Q 
So this is a particular kind of co-fiber resolution we want in this, in this, uh, I mean, here we, we can put Tinix model structure, I mean, uh, uh, well, these model structures were known before the news, but, uh, but it's, it's the same. Um, so, uh, so, right, so what is a minimum Sullivan model? So V is concentrated in positive uh, cohomological degrees. So uh, here, uh, yeah, this is the V is a graded vector space concentrated in positive cohomological degrees, uh, and it's of finite time. So it's a, in each degree, it's finite dimensionally. So in the Durham theorem, what can we say about the compatibility with the algebra structure? So actually, this is a, this is, can't be a, a, a differential graded algebra morphism because this is commutative and this is not. Uh, but it, 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 you can actually extend it to an A-infinity quasi morphism. This was proved by Basfield and Guggenheim. Um, yes. So so yes. Um, uh, so finite type. Uh, yes, and then V has a filtration. This is the main focus condition. So uh, uh, an increase in filtration of V such that the differential is positive. The differential infiltration level P lands you in filtration in the sub algebra generated by filtration in this P minus one. And then the minimality condition is, is the uh, that the differential is decomposable in the sense that if I differentiate the generator, I get something without linear term. Uh, and I guess I forgot to say that lambda v denotes the free graded commutative algebra uh, on, on the, the symmetric algebra on v, but in the in the grade itself. Um, yes. Uh, so we, and then, so you can always construct such a thing. Um, um, and one further property that is important is is the property of the talk. This implicit realization uh, namely I mean if you want to compute the derived functor of this implicit realization um, um, so we should I mean insert a cofiber object here the Sullivan algebra are cofiber objects and they have good properties namely if you look at the uh, um, I guess the unit of that junction, or actually the co-unit since we're in the opposite category. Um, this is actually a quasi-isomorphism. So this tells us that the, the, the simplicial realization has the correct cohomology. It doesn't have any the same cohomology as the other And um, yeah, and this here it's really important that really important that you have finite type. This is this is really untrue if V has not finite type. So this is one of the points where Sullivan's theory breaks down for basically that a lot of finite type. Um, I guess I will not have so much time to talk about the proofs of these things, but I mean, I just want, so these are the key properties and you can read about these in any any account of Russian homotopy theory, but it's sometimes hard to, uh, to, to, to pinpoint what the important points are, so I try to isolate them for you. This is what you need to make sure that the following is true. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is an exercise. Now, now it's an exercise in category theory. I've now told you what the sort of, you know, the, the, this is, gives you the content of the theory, and from this you can deduce some consequences using, you know, category theory. So, uh, uh, so these, these 
imply that uh, x is rationally equivalent to y if and only if uh, these mirror differential graded algebras are weakly equivalent uh, in, in, in the category of strict commuter differential graded algebras. Okay, so that's an exercise. Use the above properties of things. And now, uh, th th this now already allows us to prove the first half of the main theorem. So, proof of the infinity case. Uh, so, so yeah, so by uh, now, well, if we continue this equivalence, well, this. Uh, that these are quasi isomorphic infinity gates is equivalent to, you know, do this homotopy transfer, etc., etc., et uh, to the fact that the cohomologies of these Durham algebras, and, and I mean, here we're now using that the cohomologies by the Durham theorem is identifiable with the ordinary singular cohomology. And, and so that's that's really really it. It's a simple application. Once you know this outcome of Sullivan's theory, it's it's a direct application of the theory. Now let's see. So. Um, And now everyone expects me to say that, oh, now to prove that infinity case, let's move to Quillen's theory. And then Quillen constructed a DGL associated to every simple connected space that records the rational homotopy type. And you can apply homotopy transfer theorem for L infinity algebras to prove the second part of the main theorem. Great. I'm actually going to prove it in a different way because it will uh, highlight another interesting point that I want to, that, that will be important for my lectures. So I'm not going to do the expected proof of the L infinity case um, in the, I guess, four minutes that are remaining. So I want to point out that there's a strong connection between Sullivan algebras and L infinity algebras. Uh, so remember that this we define the code chains of an L infinity algebra. This was, this was the dual of the of the bar construction of the L infinity algebra. Um, it gives us a DG commutative algebra out of any L infinity algebra by construction. And you can check if you you know sit down and check carefully. This actually gives an isomorphism of categories. Not an equivalence category, there's an actual isomorphism categories um, between finite type uh, L infinity algebras, uh, L concentrated in non negative uh, degrees, and uh, finite type uh, CGDAs. Uh, commutative differential graded algebras of the form lambda d, comma d, uh, with d concentrated in positive cohomology degrees. They're not important yet. So this is this is just a projection, but uh, 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 you can check that. The sub, so I, I mean, this would be more general than Sullivan algebra. So I don't have any filtration yet. But if, if I have a Sullivan algebra, so this is actually equivalent to degree wise nilpotent. Yes, exactly. This is equivalent. So L is nilpotent in the graded sense. 
every positively graded Lie algebra is important because taking brackets push up, up the degrees, you need know, fixed degree, uh, uh, the lower centers here to stabilize. Um, so this means that the lower central series stabilizes degree wise. So for all degrees n, there exists a k. So if that has to be here in the lower central series rotation level k, you get zero when, when k is big enough. This is equivalent to this being a, a sub of an algebra. And um, a consequence, and, and also, I mean, the minimality here, the composability, the differential corresponds to minimality of the infinity algebra in the sense that the differential is zero. So I will end now with the proof of. Uh, yeah, and then furthermore, uh, it's a fundamental property of Sullivan algebra that we know since the beginning of the subject that the homotopy groups are calculated as a dual of the generators. Um, so the differential. In the minimum in the minimal solvent model, if you identify the dual of B with the rational homotopy groups of the of the space, and I mean this is isomorphic to uh, to 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 pi n of x. Uh, uh, this corresponds. An infinite algebra structure on on the, the shifted Russian homotopy groups, and then you can just invoke the uniqueness of minimal Sullivan models. So two spaces are rationally equivalent if and only if the Sullivan models are isomorphic, if and only if the L infinity algebras are L infinite isomorphic. Um, so as I said, so this, yeah, I, I didn't say this properly, this, this here is an isomorphism of categories where I have infinity morphisms on this side and, and a normal CDJ morphism on that side. So, so that's another way to prove the infinity equation. I, I, sorry, I was a bit rushed to the end here. I think, I think I'm out of time, so I should probably stop here. Thanks for that. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Well, uh, Daniel. Hi, Alexander. Thanks a lot for the talk. Um, could you spend a couple of words maybe on uh, relations uh, between the, the cell infinity algebra structure and uh, um, the whitehead products? Oh, yeah, that's actually, <laughs> that's in my notes. That's what was the plan for this lecture as well. <laughs> uh, I guess a lot of time. So, so um, you know, I could, I could give that. That's, that's like uh, 10 more minutes. So I don't know if this is the time you probably want to go for lunch. I certainly want to go for lunch. Uh, but maybe, I don't know if, if there, there, there's some like just informal discussion sessions to be organized. I would propose that this could be a topic for, for that. I could then take 10 minutes to explain. There's some, I mean, this is, this is a key point with the infinity structures is that they give a, a more streamlined account to higher structures. So the, the higher order white products on the homotopy groups they are not really operations. They are, I mean, they're, they're secondary and tertiary uh, uh, homotopy operations, which means that they're only partially defined. 
and they're only defined after a certain indeterminacy. Um, but the, the relation is in, briefly that the affinity structure on the Russian homotopy groups uh, selects for you high order mass operations when they are defined uh, up to brackets of lower arity. That's roughly what's going on. But I, I have actually some more can make precise statements and I'd be happy to discuss that, but maybe not right now. Thanks a lot. Is there any other question? Sorry? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Hopefully. But they are very shy uh, when they are at home. So feel free if you have any question for Alexander. No more question here? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Alexander, once again. Thank you. Have a nice lunch, please. <laughs> <laughs>